today we've got another Microtik product. This is uh, a fair bit different and completely at the other end of the spectrum from the CCR 1036 we looked at last time. This is a RB260GS. This is one of their few devices that doesn't run router OS out of the box. Uh, this runs a stripped down version called Switch OS. These are just basic smart switches. Um, they've got VLAN tagging and that's really about it. There's some performance stuff in there as well. Um, these are meant to typically be deployed as edge devices. The, the same place you'll see things like, you know, your typical Netgear five port smart switches, but these are meant to be slightly smarter um, since they're, you know, they are a smart switch. They're not just a dumb switch. This one I mentioned is a five port model. Um, this is a little bit different than some basic other ones. Let's just go ahead and get into it. We've got our little RB260 series instructions. It also calls out that this is called the CSS 106. Um, and I believe this is the, the 5G model since we've got five ports. We've got the switch itself. And one thing you'll notice that's typically not present on consumer switches right away is we have an SFP module. Uh, so these are a little bit more expensive than your typical desktop switch. They run in the $50 price range. However, they also contain a fiber interface. So these work very well as fiber to ethernet converters and networks that would need devices like that. Maybe you have multiple buildings and you know your second building doesn't have a ton going on. It's just a couple of end port devices. Uh, but you still had to run fiber to get there. Uh, a device like this is going to do it. Then you've got an AC adapter, and that's it. The rest is just cardboard. Packaging is mostly cardboard. There's no plastic. There's no foam. So very environmentally conscious on that. The only other packing is this this paper. This isn't even coated or anything like that. It's just regular folded paper. And then we've got a twist tie on the power adapter itself. Um, on the features in this switch, it looks like this just pops together for the most part. I don't think, yeah, there's no screws under that. So we'll pop this apart in a second. Um, one of the more standout features for me on these switches is that they also support PoE in for their power source. In fact, it should say connecting, powering. So direct input power jack, ethernet port accepts passive power over ethernet. So that's port one here. There is a PoE model so if you wanted to wire, you know, a house or something like that and not have to have power cords at all the, the endpoints for about $10 more than this one, I'll have links to both. Uh, you'd buy the PoE out model and I give you ports two through five for power. And then you'd have the ability to put, you know, switch in uh, a living room and a media room, maybe a bedroom. I don't know why you'd need more than one wired device in a bedroom, but who knows? Um, maybe you've got a second living room, a den, that kind of thing. You'd be able to put one of these in each place and wire up your TV, a Chromecast Ultra, game console, two game consoles, take your pick, uh, without having to run dedicated power for this. So this means it's not gonna fight with the TV and those consoles and things like that for space on a power strip. With all of that said, um, we are going to put this through some performance tests and a follow-up to this, but I want to get a look at what's inside. This just uses a basic plastic shell. Um, I've seen various replacements and mounts for this and some of the other 
smaller micro tick devices, places like Thingverse, so they're fairly popular with the, the maker community. Um, I purchased these for some changes that I need to make at work, and I won't be using the PoE functionality, unfortunately. Um, all right, so that just pops out like that. Normally, I would use a, a plastic tool for this instead of metal. Unfortunately, those broke. So I need to get new. This is a sticker on this end. So anyways, I was saying I need to get new spudgers. All right, there we go. So it looks like, as is fairly common, um, I'll just set this sticker over there. Microtik actually uses this case for a few things. We've got punch outs for different positions for DC power jacks. We've got a punch out for a USB. I think there's a small router, maybe the hex PoE that uses the same enclosure. This should just kind of, oh, let me grab small pliers. Oh, I guess I didn't need that. I was just stuck in there. So we've got a pretty basic board. We can see that it's marked as a CSS 106. It looks like we've got a couple of unpopulated points. There's a, a section here and here. I would be unsurprised if you told me that this used the same exact circuit board for the PoE version, um, just with the PoE version having some additional uh, integrated circuits on board. We've got a small ARM processor on it, um, not that we can do a whole ton with it. There is a CRS device directly above this that is in the same form factor that they may just add a memory module and uh, be able to use that ARM CPU. And all of our components are on one side of the board. There's absolutely nothing on the back, save for some solder pads. So this is pretty basic. We've got one button on it. That's it. We've got our peril jack. Um, I believe under this heat sink we would see the requisite circuitry for converting between this SFP module and the type of signal you'd get out of these Ethernet jacks. Yeah, that's that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, do we have a date code on this? Tell us when it was made, maybe. I've got a serial number, I've got the MAC addresses. I'm not 100% familiar with Dragonwell, who seems to be the uh, Phi chips they used for the Ethernet controllers. So we've got 7.2 and 7.5 painted on there. I don't think there's actually... Well, there's a... Two, one, six. Okay, so there's a, a date code stamped into the plastic. It's the, the type with the little arrows that indicates what it is. But I have different dates on both sides of the shell, so I'm not going to be able to really place when this was made. 
Um, as far as the depth in their supply chain, I, I have another one of these at work that's only uh, a few months behind on the software out of the box. So as I mentioned with the uh, CRS device, I don't think they have a particularly deep supply chain where you're going to get a unit that is shipping with years old software unlike some other vendors. So let's just, well that all snaps back together rather, rather satisfyingly. And, yeah, put the sticker back on. All right, there we go. Um, so that's a quick tour. Take a peek inside an RB260GS. As we saw, pretty simple circuit board. And uh, I mentioned um, the pricing on these. I believe this one we paid $49.4, which is high for a five port switch. Not as high when you consider that it is a smart switch and it does have a fiber interface and it can be powered via PoE. Um, and even though this isn't the PoE version, actually supports PoE out on port one as well, I believe. No, this isn't one of the passive PoE in and out. There are some of their models. Um, I have a, a HAP AC that we're gonna take a look at in a couple of weeks here. And that does support PoE in and out to a second device with what's included out of the box. So that's it. Not a whole ton to say. Um, really, most of what your average user is going to interact, interact with is right here on the face. And that SFP is fantastic if you have an application for it. And I didn't get the sticker on straight. Um, a lot of ISPs these days are providing fiber service, so this is... Definitely a cheap option for just an adapter to go between fiber and gigabit ethernet. There we go, that's on straight this time. Okay, that makes me feel better. We're gonna do some basic performance testing on it. We're gonna try and connect up all six ports. Um, I don't think out of the box that I have anything to hook up the fiber interface, so we may not be able to test all six. We may be limited to testing the uh, Ethernet adapters. And it's not that I don't have fiber equipment. Just all my fiber equipment's 10 gig. That is a, a gigabit or probably gig and a quarter interface adapter. So we may only be able to run a five ports test on this, but we certainly will do that. Um, if anyone has any suggestions, something they want to see me run through on this, let me know in the comments below and we will make sure to cover that. With all that being said, um, I want to thank Electrix for providing our music. As always, definitely go ahead and check his channel out. I want to thank our patrons for helping support content. And thank you for watching.